Hi there, and welcome to lesson nine, detecting stuff. So in this lesson, we're going to use a powerful trigger in Protopie's arsenal called detect. And the detect trigger allows you to detect changes in objects and layers and values. So it's a really cool and powerful feature. And we're gonna use it in this particular prototype to detect when I'm typing in this input field and based on what I'm typing, we're going to filter some of these squares below. Okay, so this is going to use a few other things that we've learned in previous lesson, like variables we're going to be using and conditions we're going to be using. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a variable, and I'm going to just create a variable for all scenes, and I'm going to call this search text. And I'm going to make this text variable, sorry, I'm going to make this variable a text variable rather than a number variable. So this, this variable is going to hold the whatever text we type into our input field. Okay, so we're going to add our first trigger and it's going to be unsurprisingly detect. And when you use detect, you have to tell detect the thing you want to detect the change in because all detect does at this level, the trigger, it just detects that something has changed. So the target of my detect is going to be my input field. So I'm just going to choose input one. And the I have to tell it the property that I want to detect as well. So you can detect changes in any of these properties. I'm going to choose the text property because I want to I want detect to tell me when the text is changing. Okay. So when the text is changing, I want to add a response. I want to add an action to trigger on, on based on the change. And the response I'm going to add is assign. So assign is a response specifically for you to assign values to variables. And I want to assign a value to the variable. In fact, I want to assign the text that's being typed to the variable. So I'm going to select my variable search text. I'm going to come into my formula window here. I'm going to tap FX and I'm going to tap plus and I'm going to find my search text variable. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to find my, my input field and I'm going to type a dot and I'm going to look for its text property and I'm going to click OK. So basically my detect is going to run and it's going to run when I'm typing something in my input field. And every time it, make, it, it, it senses a change, it's going to assign the text I'm typing to the search text variable. Okay, so let's just test that to see if that's working. And the way we're going to test that, like we did um, in, the, in the variables lesson, is we're going to turn on this little bug, turn on a little buggy, and we're going to be able to see the text being written to our variable as we're typing. So let's run that, give that a go. Okay, so I'm going to tap into my input field and I'm going to type some text. And you can see that it's being written to the variable after every keystroke. Okay, so that's working. That's looking cool. Let's close this off and turn bug off. Okay, so that's the first use of detect. Now I want the orange and blue squares to actually react to the changes. So I'm going to do that with yet another detect. So I'm going to add another detect. And this time I'm going to be detecting for changes in the variable. Okay. And so if the variable changes, do some stuff. So this is where my conditions come in. So I'm going to add a condition and I'm going to choose my variable and I want to specifically look for a particular word that's going to be typed in. And I'm, the word I'm gonna be looking for is orange. So if the word typed in the input field is orange, do some stuff. Okay, so inside of this condition, the stuff I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity of some of the squares. So I'm going to change the opacity of the blue squares. And I'm going to choose my first blue square. Let me just check which ones are blue. So it's rectangle two, rectangle three, and rectangle six, two, three, six. Okay, so I'm going to find my rectangle two, and I'm going to change its opacity to zero. I'm going to duplicate 
this opacity a couple of times and I'm going to change it to the other rectangle. So rectangle three and rectangle six. Rectangle six. Okay, so we've got our three opacities, which are all going to turn our turn our blue rectangles down to zero. You can also see from the preview window what you're selecting. So it looks like I've got all the blue ones. So that's going to deal with the removal of the blue squares when I type the word orange. But I also want it to be able to go the other way as well. So I want it to re-show the blue squares if I'm not typing orange or if I've changed or spelt something wrong. So I'm going to duplicate this whole condition block. So Command D. And I'm going to come into the condition. I'm going to make one change. I'm going to change the equals to not equals. So now this condition is going to look for the text if it doesn't equal orange. So if it doesn't equal orange, I want to reshow my blue square. So I'm going to shift select all of the opacities and I'm going to turn all of them up to 100. Okay, so let's just step through that. So this detect is going to check when the search text variable value has a change or when it's changing. If it's changing, it's going to hit this first condition. It's going to say, hey, is the value in that variable orange? If it is, turn all of the blue squares opacity down to zero. But if it's not, turn them all back up again. Okay, so let's preview that and see if it works. So I'm going to type into my input field and I'm just going to type, start typing orange. And you'll see that as soon as I, let me just move that away. As soon as I type the E, my blue squares disappear. But if I remove the E, you can see they reappear. So there you go. A type ahead filter using the detect trigger, using conditions and using variables inside a protopy. Okay, so this about wraps up this lesson for how you can use the detect trigger. I'll be really interested to see how you can use it. This is definitely one of the things in my prototype arsenal that I use almost on a daily basis. Okay, so this about ends this lesson and I'll see you in the next one.